Hey guys, welcome to the first video on Scala tutorial for beginners. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about Scala. So first of all, what is Scala? So the name Scala is an acronym for scalable language. And Scala is a modern multi-paradigm programming language designed to express common programming patterns in concise, elegant, and type safe way. So Scala is a scalable programming language for component software with the focus on patterns like abstraction, composition and decomposition and not on primitives. Now Scala was written by a developer called Martin Odreski who is from Switzerland at EPFL. Before writing Scala, Odreski formally worked on generic Java and Java C and Sun's Java compiler. Scala is a statically typed language as Java, but it's a little bit different from Java. Now, first we need to understand what is statically typed language. So in statically typed language, a variable has a type and can hold only values of that type, right? So if uh, you need to declare a variable, you need to declare its type also, right? You must specify type for every variable. That means type error are caught by compiler and not at runtime. So Scala is also statically typed, but it uses type interfacing. That is, it figures out the type so you don't have to figure them out. So the good thing about Scala is less typing, more fun and type errors are caught by compiler. But the bad thing is you need to be familiar with more kind of uh, error messages. Now Scala runs on JVM that is Java Virtual Machine and it's fully interoperable with Java. That means you can use any Java code in Scala and you can use Scala code in Java also. Now Scala has the functionalities of object oriented language as well as functional language and also it has dynamic features. That means Scala blends object oriented and functional programming in a statically typed language. Now if you're thinking about the speed of Scala compared to Java, it's almost as fast as Java programs. And it has an advantage of having a shorter code. So Odoreski, who was uh, the inventor of Scala, reports 50% reduction in most code over Java. So if you are using Scala over Java, you can write less and achieve more. And also Scala have fewer errors you may have uh, encounter null pointer problems in Java, but there is no null pointer exceptions or problems in Scala. Scala is also more flexible. So if you want to write multiple classes in one file, you can do so in Scala. So why learn Scala? The simple answer is because Scala is practical. So Scala can be used as a drop-in replacement of Java as we have already discussed in the previous slide. So you can use your Java code in your Scala code and also the vice versa. So you can use Scala code in Java code also. That means you can write mixed Scala slash Java projects. The next advantage is you can use Java libraries in your Scala code. So if you want to use uh, different libraries which are already defined in Java, you can import them in your Scala code and use them. The next advantage is you can use different Java tools to develop your Scala code. So for example, you can use Ant, Maven, JUnit, etc. And you can also use SBT, which is a popular tool for uh, writing Scala applications. Now it has a decent IDE support also. So you can uh, create your Scala project on a NetBeans IDE or an IntelliJ IDE or Eclipse also supports a Scala project. Scala also have a Scala IDE available on internet. 
So uh, this is a Eclipse based IDE, which is a Scala IDE you can download from internet for developing your Scala projects. So if you are a Java developer or a C++ developer or a Ruby developer, there are few advantage of using Scala over these languages. So let me uh, list few of them. So you can get the power of the platform independency of Java libraries, but without the boilerplate and verbose code. So if you are using Java, you need to create many boilerplates for many functions, for example, getters and setters and whatnot. And you need to write a verbose code. But in Scala, you can write the same code in fewer number of lines. So if you are writing your, the same code as you are writing in Java, for example, you will achieve the same goal in fewer number of lines. Next is you will get the simplicity and productivity like Ruby, but with static typing and compiled bytecode. In addition, when you are using Scala, you will get the functional goodness and concurrency support like Haskell, but without complete paradigm shift and with the benefits of object-oriented programming. Now, what I find especially attractive in all of its magnificent features, among other, is that most of the object-oriented design patterns, which require lots and lots of uh, boilerplate code, for example, in languages like Java, are supported natively in Scala. For example, singleton pattern are available via object, Adopter and decorator patterns are available via traits and implicits. Visitor pattern is available via pattern matching and strategy pattern is available via uh, closures, for example. And finally, there is a full interoperability with well-supported Java platform. So you can mix Java and Scala in both directions. And there is not much penalty nor compatibility problems when switching to Scala after having experienced the annoyance of uh, Java, which makes code hard to maintain when you write lots and lots of Java code. So this was a brief introduction about Scala. From the next video, we will see how we can install Scala and how we can write our first Scala code. So stay tuned and please write, comment and subscribe and bye for now.